administration to the local church hall to hear how, if they're called up to fight, they can claim their right to say no. For the Elofs, Mordecai Venunu is the ultimate conscientious objector. When they first visited him in 1997, it was his 11th year in solitary confinement. And we waited, and they brought him in, and uh, he looked like an old man. I didn't anticipate that. And um, he came up to us, and he put his fingers through the, through the bars, through the cage, because it was a steel cage. And we were crying. Um, we felt so awful to see him like this. Benunu writes regularly. It's the only communication he's allowed with the outside world. But his letters take months to arrive, and they're always censored. Oh, he says, don't yeah. feel so bad. We can bear another year. My, what courage. The early letters that we got were totally cut out. I mean, you could, you could pick it up. This isn't even an example, because they were cut out more than that. More than this. They use a highlighter, and then they bring it to Mordecai, and he has to cut out the, the things that they've highlighted. And one time, he said they weren't paying attention, and so he just put the pieces in envelope. We got them because we said, you know, we got the pieces, we got the cutouts, and they're really not even significant. I think it's control, total control. Today, Jerusalem is a ghost town drained of life. Israel's nuclear weapons have proved useless in its latest war. The suicide bombers have frightened the tourists away. The economy's collapsed. Israelis have learned to live with war. Every citizen gets a gas mask, is taught how to use it, and is expected to have it ready in case of attack. Nuclear weapons are seen as a justifiable deterrent by most Israelis who feel besieged by enemies. Forty years ago, Uzi Evan, then a young scientist at Dimona, was in at the start of Israel's bomb. We were a very small country. We were surrounded by much, much larger, more populous states on borders that are almost impossible to defend. And the Holocaust was very much in our memory at that time and we all realized that we have to do something to prevent the same scenario from happening again so we were young crew most of us were very young very enthusiastic working on something we believed is essential for our existence here, like building the final insurance policy that we will not be attacked or terminated. It was the young Shimon Perez back in the 50s who negotiated a secret deal with the French to buy a nuclear weapons reactor like theirs. But while Demona was going up, intelligence reports reached Washington that Israel was building an atom bomb. Despite claims that Demona was for peaceful purposes only, Israel's leader Ben Gurion was summoned to Washington President Kennedy feared an arms race in the Middle East and demanded inspections. But when inspectors finally entered the plant in May 1961, they were tricked. They were shown a fake control room on the ground floor. They were unaware of the six floors below where the plutonium was made. Well, this was something of great pride and uh, almost a legendary story in Dimona, according to Venunu, uh, when the Americans came. Uh, they were completely hoodwinked. All the entrances, including the lift shafts, were bricked up and plastered over, so it was impossible for anyone to find their way down to the lower floors. After Kennedy's assassination, the pressure on Israel was off. His successor, Lyndon Johnson, turned a blind eye. 
Then, in 1969, Israel's Golda Meir and Richard Nixon struck a deal renewed by every president to this day. Israel's nuclear program could continue as long as it was never made public. It's called nuclear ambiguity. The term nuclear ambiguity, in some ways it sounds very grand, but isn't it just a, a euphemism for deception? Somebody wants to kill you, and you use a deception to save your life. It's not immoral. If we wouldn't have enemies, we wouldn't need deceptions. We wouldn't need the talent. Was this the justification also for concealing the flaws of the plutonium reprocessing areas from the Americans, the inspectors, when they came? You are having a dialogue with yourself, not with me. But that's been documented in a number of books. Ask you the question to yourself, not to me. But it, I mean, is, is it not true? I don't have to, uh, to answer your question, Stephen. I don't see any reason why. Ambiguity is a luxury unique to Israel. Today, the country's an inspection-free zone, protected from scrutiny by America and her allies. This is the place where Van Nunu identifies as the separation plane, built mostly underground. And this is the silver dome of the ammonia nuclear reactor. Ronan Bergman is an Israeli journalist specializing in security and defense. This picture was taken by uh, the, one of the best commercial satellites available called Iconos. And uh, Iconos is uh, capable of taking pictures up to the resolution of one meter. However, due to the demand of Israel, the American Congress ruled a new amendment to the uh, law that forbids American satellites to sell anything of Israeli sites that is uh, better than two meters, meaning the Iconos is taking the imagery of Israel and then they change the imagery to the resolution of, of, of two meters. Worse, less clear. Much, much, much less clear and worse. And that was uh, a ruling in the United States, but specifically for Israel, not for only, other countries. Only, only to Israel. Last November, there were signs of a softening towards Vanunu. The authorities allowed pictures to be taken at his parole hearing. Parole itself has always been refused. Vanunu still has secrets, the prosecutor claims, that could harm Israel. It's an argument his lawyer will have to fight at the next hearing. Will the court hear the secret that they claim Vanunu holds? They will hear some of the secrets, not the real secrets. They will hear secrets about the secrets. <laughs> and you too, as his lawyer, will hear those? Part of it, less than the court. The court will hear the secrets about the secrets. I may hear the secrets about the secrets about the secrets. Is that really the case, or is that a sort of ironic... No, it's really the case. I will, gi I will be giving some type of uh, uh, general description of the secrets. The court will get something more concrete. And the secrets themselves will be never released to anybody, if they exist at all. Nick and Mary Eloff have arrived in Israel. They hope to visit Vanunu in prison, but they haven't yet got permission. Hi. 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 Oh, gosh. Any news? Not yet. Not yet. Reina Moss is one of a small group of Israelis campaigning for Vanunu's release. She's been hassling the prison authorities for weeks to get Nick and Mary the necessary permissions. And he says he never got a fax. What she says now is that they have approval from one authority, but she's waiting for approval from a second authority. Do they clearly understand that our, our time limitation that we're sort of leaving on Friday? Oh, absolutely. I made that absolutely clear to them. I said that you're leaving on Friday. I said that you're already, you've already been here for a couple of days. Oh, I appreciate it. Oh, it's nothing. I don't, I don't mind it. It's just, you know, I, I, I wish I'd had good news. 40-year-old reactors are usually shut down. But Dimona grinds on. Dimona is under the control of the Prime Minister, beyond the reach of Parliament or public scrutiny. 
and that worries the scientist who once worked there so optimistically. As the reactor gets older and the tendency to have accidents becomes more probable,